This is Top Accolade Global News Update. I am Soibifa Jackrich. President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump swept to victory in statewide nominating contests across the country on Tuesday, setting up a historic rematch in November's general election despite low approvals ratings for both candidates. Trump won the Republican votes in a dozen states, including delegates, rich California and Texas. Brushing aside former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley, his lone remaining rival, who no longer has a viable part to the nomination, her only win of the ninth thus far came in Vermont, Edison Research projected. After a commanding performance across 15 states, where more than one third of Republican delegates were up for grabs on Super Tuesday, Trump had all but clinched his third consecutive presidential nominations. Despite facing litany of criminal charges, Trump and Biden trained their focus on each other as the results became clear. In a victory speech delivered at his Ma A Lago estate in Florida, Trump focused on Biden's immigration policies and called him the worst president in history. Another campaign between Trump 77 and Biden 81. The first repeat U.S. presidential matchup since 1956 is one few Americans seem to want. Opinion polls show that Biden and Trump have low approval ratings among voters. Immigration and the economy were leading concerns for Republican voters at this in exist poll in California. North Carolina and Virginia show the majority of Republican voters in those states said they backed deporting illegal immigrants. Trump, who frequently negrates migrants has promised to mount the largest deportation efforts in U.S. history if elected. The Palestinian militant group Haman said on Wednesday it would continue working towards achieving a ceasefire in Gaza with Israel despite the absence of Israeli negotiators from the latest round of talks in Cairo. We are showing the required flexibility in order to reach a comprehensive cessation of aggression against our people, but the occupation is still evading the entitlement of this agreement, Haman said in a statement. Negotiators from Haman, Quarter, and Egypt, but not Israel, are in Cairo, trying to rescue a 40 day ceasefire in the war between Israel and the Islamist group in time for the Muslim fasting month of Ramadan, which begins early next week. U.S. President Joe Biden said on Tuesday that it was in the hands of Haman whether to accept a deal on the table for ceasefire in Gaza Strip in exchange for the release of Israeli hostages. As his delegations held a third day of talks with no sign of breakthrough, the deal presented to Haman would free some hostages captured by Palestinian militants in the October 7th on Israel which sparked the war, while aid to Gaza would be increased to try to avert famine as hospitals treat acutely malnourished children and Hammond would provide a list of all those hostages held in Gaza. Earlier in Beirut, Hammond's official Osama Hamdan repeated his group's main demands an end to Israeli military offensive, withdrawal of Israel forces and return of all Gazians to the homes they had been forced to flee. He said any exchange of prisoners cannot take place except after a ceasefire. Israel for its part wants merely a person fight to get hostages out of Gaza and more aid insisting that it will not end the conflict before Hamas is eliminated. <laughs> Once hurt by crisis and deflation, the euro is gaining popularity among central bank reserve managers thanks to a return to positive rates and geopolitics challenging king dollars appeal. Roughly one in five at the 75 central banks surveyed by the London-based OMFIF think tank anticipates. Increasing euro holdings over the next two years, its recently published 2023 report showed. While 7% looked the decreased euro holdings, net demand was higher than for any other currency during the period and the jump from the 2021 and 2022 surveys of reserve managers controlling nearly $5 trillion. Shifts can take years to play out. The dollar, which makes up 60% of global reserves versus the euro's 20%, will not lose its crown overnight. Yet, a more positive euro outlook speaks to notable changes taking place. For starters, the European Central Bank exit from negative interest rates in 2022 drove euro area government bond yield higher after almost Almost a decade below 0% and they should remain elevated even as rates cut near. Poland's central bank, whose reserves are dominated by dollar and euro denomination assets, said that while it did not comment on changes to reserve, medium-term expected returns for euro area government bonds have improved considerably, which certainly increases the appeal of the assets class. <laughs> Be 
Bitcoin rallied again on Wednesday after retreating briefly from an all-time high it set less than 24 hours earlier as boos showed few signs of pulling their bets on the world's largest cryptocurrency. Bitcoin jumped 5% during the Asian section to an intraday peak of $66,540 in volatile trading. Not too far from Tuesday's record high of $69,202, it was last 4% higher than $65,940. The digital assets Metroric Rally, having already surged 55% for the year so far, has been fooled by investors pouring money into US spot exchange traded crypto products and the prospect that global interest rates may fall. The rally is backed by ETF flow and an outlook that includes an Ethereum upgrade and Bitcoin halving, which slows that the flow of Bitcoin minting, said Linux Lai, Global Chief Commercial Officer at Crypto Exchange OKX. The approval of 11 spots, Bitcoin ETFs by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission in late January had marked a watershed moment for the industry following an 18-month-long crypto winter plagued by a string of high-profile corporate bankruptcies and scandals. Even institutional investors who aren't shunned the token due to its sharp and wild moves have begun committing long-term money too, which experts say could help sustain the latest leg of its rally. Chinese money is pouring into funds invested in offshore assets at breakneck speed, butting up against outbound investment limits and complicating Belgium's efforts to revive domestic markets and stabilize the yuan. The rush to invest offshore reflects low confidence at home and is evident in sales of funds issued under the Qualified Domestic Institutional Investor QDII program, a key outbound investment channel that allows Chinese to buy overseas securities under Belgium's strict capital control. QDII fund units sold in January jumped 50% year-on-year to record high, while doors of domestic equity mutual funds dropped 35%. Data from the Asset Management Association of China shows assets on the management for QDII funds were up 19% year-on-year. Exchange-traded fund ETFs tracked Nikkei and Nasdaq listed stocks flagged price premium risks in recent weeks as buyers bid well above the value of underlying assets to grab a share. The outbound scramble illustrates the pressure on China's capital account and currency and the challenges in rebuilding domestic investors. Confident in their home markets, Chinese stocks are wallowing near a five-year nadir while yields on the country's 30-year treasury bounds have long record lows. Managers are also struggling to keep up and are turning away prospective investors or searching for partners and other ways around limits. The QDII scheme escaped to buy a quarter or limits on outbound investments set by China's state administration of foreign exchange. That is the size of Top Accolade Global News Updates. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy Wednesday.